Perhaps no other organization has managed to mobilize the youth of America like Rock the Vote. Inspired by the impending threats of music censorship, Rock the Vote was formed in 1990. A massive registration voter education drive was launched. The goal? To turn around the 20-year trend of voter apathy amongst 18 to 24-year-olds and to give kids a voice to prevent government officials from regulating and targeting our music for their political purposes. Rock the Vote set out to help young people get active in our country's politics while showing them that they do indeed power to invoke change in America. They need only take advantage of a powerful tool, their vote. Last year, over 11 million young voters went to the polls for the 1992 presidential election. The vote was rocked. 1993 marks the third anniversary of Rock the Vote and a time to look back and celebrate victories won as well as looking to the future and the struggle still ahead. One word, vote, capital V-O-T-E. Rock the vote, wrap the vote, pop the vote, eat the vote, mix it up with some mayonnaise and suck it down like a huge tuna sub. He started out with a few quirky yeah, PSAs. Say? Not voting sucks. But quickly snowballed into a force for change. Got two options, vote, hostile takeover. I'm down with either one. We're you, we have a chance to change things. MTV got involved doing two primetime specials and pretty soon musicians and actors as diverse as Aerosmith, Eddie Vedder, MC Light, Dwight Yoakam and Rosie Perez were showing their support by the PSAs. Do you want me to say more? The first major cause Rock the Vote supported was passing of the Motor Voter Bill, a legislation which would allow for people to register to vote when they applied for or renew their driver's license. Dear Senator postcards were distributed as concerts such as Lollapalooza and were included on the CD long boxes of R.E.M. and Lenny Kravitz. In the end, Rock the Vote delivered over 250,000 of these postcards to the White House. White House. And after being vetoed by Bush in 1992, the Motor Voter Bill was finally signed into legislation by Bill Clinton in May of this year. You can't dangle carrots in front of young people and say, if your favorite rock star tells you to vote, then maybe you should go vote. Rock the Vote realized early on that to reach the kids of America, they'd have to go to where they were. We took their voter registration drive on the road. It was like Guns N' Roses, Lollapalooza, and YouTube CTV tour. Rock the Vote specials, featuring celebrities like Tom Cruise and Whoopi Goldberg, a national television. At the power. Pearl Jam even pitched in by playing a massive free Rock the Vote show in Seattle, and a record was set there when over 2,700 people were registered to vote in one day. In July of this year, Rock the Vote lost its president, Patrick Lippert, to AIDS. Unlike a lot of adults, Patrick Lippert understood that the lack of young voter turnout at election time stemmed not from apathy, but rather from a feeling of disenfranchisement with the country, a feeling of being uninvolved. So we turned out at the polls for the presidential election. We got the Motor Voter Bill passed. What's up next? Plenty. Rock the Voters started a massive membership drive to unite young voters and keep them aware of the political topics affecting them. It's not just about electing a president every four years. It's about dealing with the issues that affect us directly and fighting for changes we want. But our only weapon is our vote. We've done an amazing job so far, but we've still got a long way to go.